the is, is a this is a talk that is uh, made of four parts but the most important one is yours <laughs> is 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 this conceptual rupture i started my my life in science uh, working on hydrological uh, water sets and after that i finished in the atmospheric basins but they ex does they exist this uh, atmospheric basins we can discuss about that and and to see how we are doing this research on properties physical and chemist and chemical properties of the atmosphere related with the land surface uh, processes that is the the subject of my research uh, during a lot of years uh, well this is mine the 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 talk is uh, centered about uh, on, on the research uh, that we are doing in the climate project, the climate project is a is a is a project that, that um, built uh, a network of stations that we can uh, describe as climatically sensible. They they are these stations we we know these stations as sensors of climate change. That means that that some property of these ecosystems of the biogeochemistry of the functioning of the ecosystem has uh, some stress or challenges in front of uh, climate change. I will explain uh, during the the talk that. This is the, the network of stations. Well, 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 one moment, please. No, is oh, e, this is the, the talk that we are doing there. The most important is the the people that most contributed to the the, the this uh, talk is uh, myself, Roger Kurko, that is Kurko, who is here, Claudia Grossi is at the UPC now, Alba Agada also at the UPC, and, and Agustin Panareda that is working in Reading in, the, in, the, in Copernicus. Hmm? That means that we, you can see what, what we will talk about. This is the um, eight points, eight stations that are the sensors. The, Time to time, there is some definition of these sensors. We obtain continuous data every every second with instruments that are doing measurements every second. That is cavity ring down spectrometry uh, instruments. But usually, we give the data open uh, with uh, an, an early average. And the, the data are absolutely open, open uh, to anyone to do uh, anything, anything that one can decide about their life. To the, to which kind of data we are providing? We, we provide data about greenhouse gases and the structure of the atmosphere where these greenhouse gases are working. And we try to have a, we try to have near real time data. Uh, this is the vision that we had when we started that in 2010. 2010, we described these these uh, stations as separated, well, as separated 500 kilometers each. Each one of the other, each one of, of any any other, it, there is more or less 500 kilometers. That is the scale of the transport in the atmosphere. And, and another thing to know is that uh, in our latitudes, uh, um, an, an atmospheric situations last five days except this uh, anticyclone that we have now that is lasting for a month but usually an, an atmospheric situation lasts five days that is the time that th that uh, the winds take to cross all the all the Iberian peninsula uh, 
this is you, you can see that we look at some parts that are stations points in in the in in the in the upper place of this uh, hydrological uh, basin, the Ebro basin, and at the mouth in the in in on the sea in in Delta del Ebro. Uh, Sierra de Gredos is at the uh, at the sources of the main uh, rivers that are going to the Guadiana or to the um, to the Duero. Uh, the same for Sierra de Cazorla is Segura, Segura de la Sierra, uh, that is also at the mouth of the of the river Segura and at the mouth of uh, uh, Guadalquivir and, and so on. The the other and the others are, have different um, positions. Uh, mostly, the, the most important maybe is El Hierro to understand well that means. A, cl a climatic sensor, uh, a, a sensor on climate change. In El Hierro, we have a, a, moon, a mountain in a crater. We have the mountain is open, is half a crater that that has 1,400 um, meters, and the uh, Lauri Silva is growing from 1,000 to 1,000. 300. Hmm? If the convection in the sea makes that the, that the clouds go uh, up and up and up, they can, feel they can eventually not have rain in, in the island. The only, the only water that they receive is horizontal rain. That means at, uh, at noon, the clouds form, the, the transport goes, of these clouds goes to the mountain, they rains but horizontally, that means you, you receive the cloud and you, and you are absolutely weather, <laughs> uh, but, but this cloud, there is a lot of water, but if the, the base of the cloud goes up and up and up, the Laudi Silva will disappear and the island will have no more water. That is an example of what is a climatic sensor. That means that our idea is to understand how this change in the convection in the island with, um, will, um, uh, will change the properties of uh, all the ecosystems, the integrated properties of the ecosystem, measured as greenhouse gases, natural greenhouse gases. The other thing is, is we change it from these these basins, these river basins, to understand what happened with where where the wind comes from. In, in every station. And, we, and we, you can see there that we have some kind of watershed. No, it's not a watershed, it's an atmospheric basin, another atmospheric basin, another one, another one, etc. Hmm? Every, every place where this is a, a, is a climatology uh, of three years of the sources of the winds that arrive to the station. That means that the station is always uh, red. You, we have the, 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 the yellow as the more close places to receive some kind of influence at the station, and the green is the, the overall um, influence. Is it okay? Sorry, I was wondering about the position of the sensors. Are they on the surface of the land? Is that in, in tower? tower? Uh, you will see now. I, I, in in Tall Tower, I, I will I will talk about that. Is is background data, but we obtain we obtain greenhouse gases in the background uh, uh, sensor. One thing that is important: Grazalema, that is this one, and Tarifa are related uh, only by 80 kilometers, but. You can see that Grafalema has a has a 
footprint that is over the coast and in, inside the, the land. And Tarifa, the most of the, of the, um, <coughs> of the influence is from the streets of, of Alboran Sea and Gulf of Cadiz. This is to, to understand why these two stations are so close one of the other. Well, we need to put also La Muela, that is in Zaragoza, that is a tall tower that you can see is in this place, just in the middle on, of the Ebro Basin, because when we put in 2006 La Muela in, in place, uh, we were thinking about the hydrological watersheds as the characteristic most important for the integrated ecosystem functioning. Mm -hmm. And the, this, is, this is the tall tower, you can see uh, the tall tower here. But during the time, and this is the resource, this is the, a picture of the tower, and at the start, this is data from 2008, and this is data from 2016. Uh, the, you can see these colors are source, different sources. Uh, the green are going from Landes. The, the, the source is in the in the Landes forest. The, the the orange and the yellow are related with Madrid or Barcelona, because La Muela has receiving winds for all these places. Mm? You can see, and there that we have, we have a footprint that is arriving to Madrid, sometimes from Barcelona, but mostly from the Ebro River and the Landes. Mm? Is okay? uh, that is very important to understand that. And, well, things are changed because uh, close to the tower now we have, but in, in, in height, there is maybe 300 meters from this polygon, uh, industrial polygon, and the, and the tower. That means that the difference is very, very high. Uh, the tower has 80 meters, is 80 meters high. This is some examples of CO2 in green in the different stations, uh, and methane that is more variable. Uh, we will. Uh, this is another, uh, in another system to to measure footprints. This is by high split, high split at noon and at midnight uh, to 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 look for differences in, in between the, the the starting point of the model. And this you can see there the the CO2 uh, di average um, daily cycle the, and the methane daily cycle. You can see that the, that the different uh, stations have different functioning mm -hmm. during the day. Uh, with, th with this data, we are working with Copernicus that is using this data to promote in, two, in, 20, 20, in 2023 they, the, the projections of the weather forecast will, be, will use the, the data with greenhouse gases to uh, calculate the radiation in the radiation of the, the influence in the in radiation of the greenhouse gases and to put this influence into the models that predict that forecast the weather the weather in for tomorrow for for the day after not in the climate um, in, in in the climate uh, models that we use usually or we know usually until now but in the operational part of the of the forecast, of the forecast. Uh, what we see there is that using this kind of of of, of um, uh, stations with a grid resolution of the model, nine kilometers uh, for forecast uh, um, models, 
compared with the usual models that is 80 kilometers, uh, the pixel is 80 kilometers, we, we can see in the triangles that how the prediction, how the forecast is better. In, in general, is, 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 there is a, is a better, better approach with high resolution to understand what is happening close to the land. Close to the land is much better to use this model with high resolution than the, the, the old ones. It's not the same with the, with the total column. The total column is more or less the same precision, the same resolution, I, the, the same values. There is not, not, a, not an improvement of the modelization for the overall column, but, but the improvement is specifically for the land surface atmosphere interaction. That means that we, we try to have the, we try to have the, in the models, uh, the most higher or the best resolution as possible. That is, is, a, is a thing that we need to consider. That is very important. But until now, the modelers that are doing global models about all the Earth, they don't, don't consider important to have more resolution in, in the data because because for the overall atmosphere with with a low resolution is okay. This is a comparison a comparison in a in in two in two of our stations. This is Balderejo and this is Gredos of the approaches of the similarity or of the fitting between models that is in color. Every year the model change and because uh, the, the models improve every year and change and the color is, is for one year, the, the blue, another year the, the, the red and so on. But you, and the data, uh, the real data is uh, in, in, in black. That you can see that in Valderejo the, there is a perfect fitting between the models and the data that we are measuring in our station. This is measurement of CO2 models and real data. But we have another, another example is Gredos that the data and the models are not fitting well, absolutely uh, at, this, at this parity in, in every year is different. And also in one month, in, in, in January, uh, we can see that the data are not close to, to the models. That is very important to, to work with Copernicus in there to try to approach better in the models the parameterization for reproducing the real data, the actual data that we, we obtain in the stations. Our data is feeding these models to try to approach this future forecast in 2020 and 2020. 23. Okay? Uh, this is another thing that we use also. We use tracers. Uh, th these tracers, uh, this is radon. This is radon measured in Delta de Lebre and in Gredos. And you can see that some stations have no by no not a great variability with radon, and other stations have. Uh, a great variability during the day in, in the concentration of the radon gas in the atmosphere. Radon is used as a tracer of physical constraints in the exchange between soils and atmosphere. That means it's only physics, only the humidity, the, only the temperature, only the winds are affecting the exhalation of radon from the soils to the atmosphere. And the biochemical uh, changes like uh, methane production and so on are related directly uh, the, mm, with the organisms, with the biochemistry of the soils and so on. We can use 
the measurements of radon during the night, for example, in Gredos, that we, we, we did that uh, with a method that is named um, radon tracer method, hmm? to obtain these values. This is, oh, sorry. This is the values of uh, methane in Gredos. You can see from January to June, we have low values, background values of methane. And from July to December, we have peaks that are really high in comparison with that. And this is one year, that is in 2016, and this is in 2017. And it's the same, it's from January to, it's the same. We use, uh, during the night, the measurements of radon and the measurements of, of methane, and we can, you can look there to the radon flux, the, the, we can calculate the, how the radon is going out, and how the methane is going out. If you see at this part, that is from June, uh, from, from January to June, in here is exactly the same that the, the methane flux. Hmm? But in, 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 the, in summer and, uh, and fall, uh, we have a difference. If you put that, there, there is a difference. There is a lot of methane that is absolutely that we can be absolutely sure that is from biogenic uh, production, from something that is going from the land to the atmosphere. We attribute uh, and we attribute this 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 change to transhumans uh, management of the of the cows. Uh, in summer, we have. Uh, more of 10,000 cows in the, in the Sierra de Gredos and in December, just before Christmas, they take all these cows and they go to Extremadura to, to, to pass the, 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 the winter and, and spring. And this change is this change in concentrations of methane cannot be seen by the models because it's a management uh, question about the cows. It's not a property of the of the land surface. It's not a property of the animals that are living in some place. It's the management of this uh, of this uh, of this cow that that makes that the methane changes. So, so high. Another thing that we can, that, that we use to follow changes in methane is a mobile system. Is that we have a car with instrumentation and we, in a Delta de Lebre, we can go across all the, all the rice paddies to have this, uh, this kind of measurement. This is our, oh, sorry. This is our station. We we go out from this station. We are following these places, that, 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 and coming back and go, coming back and so on, and coming then during three hours, more or less. This is six, 60 kilometers, more or less. It's a transect of 60 kilometers. You can see the values that are very different. There is a, a really an. Ex, uh, a, a great variability in the different fields in one place that is 300 square kilometers uh, of, sur of surface. Uh, we made that during a year. We considered, uh, we, we made a, a, a map, uh, a summary uh, of this data that is absolutely, re we related all this ch the changes during one year in 2012, uh, we related all the all the emissions, all these all the concentrations of methane were related absolutely with the management of rice, absolutely, and 
we consider what happens when we measure at different times related with the phenology of rice about the, the, the changes in methane during the, during the evening, that means uh, at the end of the day, during afternoon and after, no, this is the evening, this is, this is sunset, uh, down, and this is noon, hmm? afternoon. You can see the, the, the median values and you, and after, after the, the um, taking the, well, after removing all the, all the organic matter, of the steams and the rice uh, of the rice and so on is when we have the concentrations of the thing most different. This is important to understand that because one of the things that we need to know very well is to convert this data that we have in the field to something that we can see from the space, from the, from the remote sensing. This is in, in the United States, uh, the changes of the productivity of, of uh, colza and, and corn. Uh, and this is very important to obtain more resolution to, because the remote sensing is obtaining more resolution in data. This is, this is a vision of the, a satellite that is Venus, where we can see, in, in, no, no, not in this uh, presentation exactly, but in this part, there are some experimental fields that have only five per five meters. Mm? And we can have this resolution, Sentinel-2 have also this kind of resolution, and we can see a lot of data that we from that are not measured only with one station that we have in here in this in this lagoon. We need more more measurements to understand what is happen what is happening in this part. Especially because we have a, a, a tool that is the remote sensing that every time is going to most and most higher resolution like that. Uh, another thing is we take measurements. This is dedicated to Victor Resco that the, the other day take to us, I told to us uh, about the circadian rhythm and so on. We take the measurements just when, when the sun, when what we in Catalan we say clareja, no? uh, just one hour before the sun, the, 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 the down, and one hour after. And at the night, the same. We, we take the measurements just when the, the radiation changes absolutely the, the, uh, its properties and la, uh, start to, to lose some, some, some frequencies in the radiation until it's uh, full night. And the other, at, in the we, we take also the data, the, our measurements are from noon uh, on. Hmm? That means in the, in the afternoon, just not before noon, never, not, not one hour before noon, but afternoon. This is related with one of the, of the pictures that Victor showed us the other day. Now we restarted to do this these uh, measurements in the Delta de Lebre, but over 117 and 70, 170 kilometers. Hmm? This transex is the same, but reproduces, but also reproduces the, the old one. The old one where this, this part is the same that we, that we measured in 2012, and now in 2019, we will repeat 
we, we are repeating this data. This is just in, at the end of December, but and we measure also CO2, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen sulfide because it's all the, these, these gases are related with the anaerobic uh, transformation in the, in the rice fields. This is at dawn, it was the evening, the day after at dawn, the, 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 this is the picture of these days, and this is at noon, hmm? after, and it's similar, we will compare, we will do some kind of long-term ecological research, but with seven years of, of, of change. Huh? Seven years, seven years, seven years, etc. We don't need to have data every month to, to do long-term ecological research. What we need is to have measurements time to time. Huh? Well, uh, we will take also soil salinities. This is from another station. You, you, you have seen the Venus um, picture of um, Delta de Lebre. This is not, not uh, this is in Chures, another of our stations. Venus are taking also um, pictures, well, images of the radiation uh, for vegetation in Galicia. We also try to understand thanks was we to Ariana Corominas that started this this part of work uh, with drones with some kind of sensors the sensors that we have here um, that are small sensors that sometimes sometimes people say that are um, okay for citizen science we can discuss about that but the most important thing is that we are looking to the to the uh, physical properties of the air in the 120 meters over the rice fields. And you can see this is the, the drone measuring around this place at 5 meters high and the measurements that we have the spatial variability in this that is separated 7 meters, every point is 7 meters separated from the other and the height is 5 meters and the drone is going there, 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 and we can see that we have some kind of a structure. This in density, in density expressed as altitude uh, of a standard atmosphere. How, how the physical properties of the air is absolutely different in a very small place. We, this is the CO2 that we measure with the same sensor. And we, we also have uh, we, um, we also measure the water content, then you can see that is inversely related absolutely with the infrared light that we have also uh, as a, a, a sensor in the, in the block of sensors that is, is this one. Uh, this is our work that follows the same, with, we apply the, the same instrument, the, 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 these UAVs, will fly it exactly like our, our plane measurements that we did in 2008, 2009, 2010. This is the, 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 kind, the kind of measurements that we made in CO2 in 2000 meters high uh, of, in, in, the, in the river, by, in the river um, the river basin, the river, the river Ebre basin, and this is some kind of measurements. The, 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 the distance between the three vertical um, measurements is 60, 60 meter, 60 kilometers, sorry, is another scale. And that is important to, to look at that and to see that uh, um, uh, below, below the PBL, the things are absolutely different than over the PVL, the boundary layer, the planetary boundary layer. And we can also uh, make some kind of krieging to, uh, to, to see what is happening at different heights in, in, the, in the air masses respect to CO2. And it's the same, we are trying 
to, to we try to improve thanks this knowledge how to how to use drones to do the same improve the vertical profiles horizontal transects and so on the most important thing is to have three drones for example flying uh, synchronously in a place to 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 calculate the physical properties of the atmosphere that we are measuring hmm? this is an example of two catchments in la muela in, Sarago in la muela saragossa in Rignola and in Valladolid you can see the differences that we can do find in the same in the same uh, uh, atmospheric situation hmm? weather situation there is some kind of differences between basins hmm? absolutely this is how we we try to understand the vertical variability in, related to physical properties of the atmosphere in, until 40, 45 uh, 100 meters hmm? there is two discontinuities two great discontinuities in there we have the PBL discontinuity hmm? you can see that the most important thing is the change with, uh, with a, a changing in this gradient in the gradient uh, of uh, is related with this change of, of temperature hmm? and mostly these three parameters that we have using FlexPAR using a model of transport these are three parameters that are related to the transport of the air how the air that arrives to the point we, where we were measuring this data which kind of, property, of physical properties have we use the three exponents of the, the different relations. This is the, expo the Lyapunov exponent. That means if the, if the wind is arriving uh, in a filamentous form, this is the, the dispersive exponent. The dispersive exponent takes us how, how one wind opens the plume during during the the travel and this other one is that you can see is, is difficult to see but there is some kind of difference just in the PBL that is the exponent of the is a potential exponent using a kind of allometry is how the time the, the residence time over the surface uh, is changing during the three or four days that this wind is is going. The area covered day after day has a, has a, a kind of change that is allometric. This allometry can be described with this parameter beta, and we can see that there is discontinuities in 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 the vertical um, um, distribution of CO2 and in the physical properties of the transport that can help us to understand the footprints of the measurements that we can make during a vertical measurement in some place. Hmm? Uh, the, I will pass that. Uh, and, and this is the, the uh, this is this is to show you only that in in this kind of triangles the, in this kind of, pri um, of prismas uh, the three points the three points in the vertex are really have different footprints that means 60 kilometers is enough to have different footprints in in when we measure vertical um, changes in the co2 or in methane this is another example we change now we we are going to another uh, basin more small that I uh, smaller smaller than the other that is the Balderejo Valley the Balderejo Valley we will try in Balderejo Valley to understand what happened in the atmosphere measuring something in the land surface the, this something in the land surface is uh, a network of sensors that measures temperature that measures humid temperature at, at one meter of high uh, 
and temperature and humidity of the surficial soil. Hmm? That means we can reproduce the, 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 the picture of the energies in the, in the, in the, in the, in the base, in the land, over the, and we can also measure what happened with the, with the convective cells that can form in this valley. Some time to, the, the winds can pass at, the, at this valley, crossing over the valley and doing that here we can have some kind of accumulation of gases because this is a barrier to this convection to go to go further up in the atmosphere and time to time this this kind of uh, uh, transport by the winds can clean the valley and to change absolutely what was happening in the valley this is an example that is very possible to see the drones. The drones are very clear here. This is Gibbs, uh, this is Vultures, uh, Vultures, and this, and we, we fly three, this was a test, how to fly three drones at the same time uh, as, a, as, a, as a, in a military formation, synchronously, doing that at the same time, and uh, go, go on, going up and down at the same time, and so on, to calculate a volume of properties in the physical conditions of the atmosphere. Uh, we have also some, this is the fixed instruments that we have to measure the temperature and the soil moisture and so on. All these things can be used with, with because the pixels of over the this valley, the, the pixels seen by remote sensing uh, can be eight, nine different pixels, and we can calculate the NDVAs and to relate that with the moisture of the soil, with the formation of winds and so on. And, well, this is uh, some kind of uh, collaborations. Uh, I was talking. I only can, is only I will show that now is to say <coughs> that this kind of instruments or small instruments and re, and and repro, um, cheaply reproducible and to have a lot of these instruments in in some place can be used also to measure. Uh, the um, emissions of the soil change, changes changes of uh, CO2 over the soil, and we also want to show you that uh, in this place here, just in here, we are taking measurements um, for nightly to have these measurements, and the green are measurements that we take in um, in in the CRAM, the High Mountain Research Center in, in, in there. This is some values of the CRAM, hmm? yes? And you can see that this is the influence of the, of the Biella, of the tunnel of, of Biella. Hmm? The, the measurements of CO2 are very high, but at the, at the rest of the directions of the wind are related with the valley. This is very important. The points, the stations, the measurements in the, in, in the atmosphere add, is, is a difference with the river catchments. Is, is in the atmospheric basins, we need to know which is the direction that the transport is occurring. In the, in the river catchment, we have the river that is going always from the same place. Uh, this is the, this kind of cheap instruments can be used to make education for educational purposes. We have 10 years in Mataró measuring. This is a day, a typical day in the Mataró. Um, um, in the Mataro city of measurements of CO2, you can see that the winds are going, these winds are coming to our instruments from the sea, these winds are coming from, from the land, from the mountains. And this is an influence of the city, and this is influence of the forest that surrounds um, Mataro during the night. Uh, you, you can see 
when when the winds change of direction there is no wind but it is important is to know that we have winds really that makes that and we have winds there also and we have the, the, and at the time of changes we have no winds well the, you can console this data this is from 2009 2009 this is one month December this is the variability of every day we have breezes these breezes are related with, the, with, the, with some kind of differences and in July no in November 2016 uh, we have these values the, the values have in some oh, one moment and this is a summary this is a summary of the changes in in Mataru Mm -hmm. uh, th this is the same. The, the every vertical is one year, and we is is from zero to to twenty four hours. And this is the different month is a vertical during during, during starting twenty and nine and twenty and sixteen. And this is a small thing to explain another thing we start to do more things about the the overall structure of the atmosphere this overall I, I will finish in a moment I think I am very late no but it's a moment is, is we we collaborate in September last September with Ithania with the people that is of IMET in Ithania to measure CO2 and methane in Madrid, and this is, is we will look at the atmosphere, at the radiation that we receive of the atmosphere to understand the the, the dark structures that we have the, in in the atmosphere that is very difficult to see without instruments, and also we are surrounding the cities with a car to measure what happened on there and to understand what happened with the greenhouse gases inside the city. This is very curious because it's a is a is from a is a is a book uh, is a portfolio. This is curiously is a, a portfolio about some kind of artists that makes different artists that that look at landforms is absolute but is perfect to explain what we are doing in madrid with this project that is, is named mehey uh, and this is all the th people in here to, we, there is carmen there no ah, there. <laughs> carmen Struck that is also there working on that this is a curiosities one uh, the the highest value this is with the this this FFTIR that that is named Fourier transform infrared measurements that is is used to understand all the column what is the value of the CO 2s the total value of CO two the of concentration of CO two above the overall column hmm? is using the sun as a as a light for 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 the spectrometer mm? and it's very curious that we, you you can look at that one moment that you can see the 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 time the time of the highest value of co2 is noon and noon we have the in the column we have the the highest value of of, of co2 and another thing is that the variability before noon is very close to the circadian variabilities that we see the other day with Victor Resco. And afternoon, the values all approach one of the other. It's for that we is interesting to measure in this part uh, when we measure. Hmm? Because this, ca is, this, this happen with the CO2. It's not through for methane. For methane, these kind of uh, steps are different kind of biogeochemical processes that happen in there. I finish now with uh, the, this is the M40, the M40, and we made measurements 
uh, in the in the morning and in the afternoon of CO2. The, this is the 29 September, and this is uh, the first uh, October, and the different values of concentration that we can find in in there. This is a a situation of uh, a still atmosphere. There, there was no winds on there, and this is a situation uh, of uh, um, um, very windy, a very windy day. This is a mixing absolutely, and there is a change in concentration uh, related with uh, the space. This is other days and represented in another form of the same. Hmm? but other days on there. And this is another kind of measurements that we are doing that is in Andalusia to find what happened using the, the killing plots to understand the isotopes of methane and to understand where are they from. This, where are the, 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 where, are, where is the methane uh, coming from? And we we look at that, and different in different places we have different delta delta 13 uh, of carbon in methane that help us to understand what was the source of that. This is uh, to finish. There is only two more slides. This, we started with basin. And, and river basins, with the concepts related with river basins, and I hope that you finish having a, a, some kind of idea of the atmospheric basins and the, and the functioning of this kind of basins related with the biogeochemistry. And this is to say goodbye. <laughs> And thanks for your attention.